In Portugal, there is a small village beyond Covilha, but not quite as far as Guarda. One day, you are sitting at the small tables in front of a cafe, and you hear someone say, take off your hat when a funeral passes. But when you look, there is no funeral procession, no hearse, no horses, no mourners. Then you see a man walking, head down, eyes fixed on the ground. Immediately, everyone takes off his hat and sits bareheaded under the cruel sun. You look at this man passing, his eyes fixed so firmly to the ground, and you understand that he himself is the funeral. You understand that he is dead, even though he walks around. After this dead man walks past, you say, what did he do? And they tell you, he who has been wronged will not allow this man to come to him. He who has been wronged will not allow this man to speak. And you ask, how can it hurt a man not to allow him to come to you? How can it hurt a man not to allow him to speak? They tell you then how it is. For if you cannot speak to he who has been wronged, then you cannot ask forgiveness. And without that, you cannot live and you cannot die. If you cannot ask forgiveness, then you become a funeral dead and on the way to the cemetery, always on the way, never coming to an end. Johnny Burge. He is the one who has been wronged. But this is not Johnny Burge's story and we'll not see him again until just before the end. Neither is this the story of a million dollar robbery or even the story of two policemen wantonly murdered. This is the story of Paul Delito, who, like Judas, needs forgiveness. <laughs> Sandy hair wire rebuilt, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Can you take it easy? 
I'm not absolutely sure, but I think that one is Eddie Safad, and the other one looks like Morris Manitoba. Thanks. Let me have it. Hello, Mike. Adam. I talked to an eyewitness, Mike. He claims there were three guys in the gang all together. And the third one, the one that got away, was the guy that was sitting in the car, the one that threw the hand grenade. Oh, by the way, what about that license? Did you do anything for us? Yeah. The license checks out to a car stolen day before yesterday. Go ahead with your ID on the missing man. Yep. Medium height, say, uh, 5 feet 8 or 9. Sandy hair. Wiry build. Wearing a seersucker jacket. Dark trousers. Black shoes, no hat. That it? Yep. Okay, I'll get out the all point. There's a guy coming down from the armored car company. He's got to check the contents of the car. Be cooperative. Stay in the car. What's up? Where are we going? We're going to get a cup of coffee. janitor made a positive identification of the missing hoodlum. Johnny Burge. Johnny Burge? Just got out ten days ago. There was no kidding around about that identification. I guess you know what I'm leading up to, Adam. Dilly do That's right. Anything else? That's all, honey. Thanks. I've put Burge's mother's house under surveillance. I put somebody on a sister. And I want you to start pressuring Delito. What makes you think Delito knows anything about Burge? Well, we'll find out. Well, let somebody else find out, Mike. Well, why does it have to be me? Why not you? What other excuse have I got for not putting you on this case? Just because you don't think it's nice? You made the original deal, didn't you? It's your problem now. I'll take it, Mike. Yes, Mike, I made the original deal. But in the original deal, we promised the man if he changed state's evidence against Burge, we'd leave him alone, that that would be the end of it. In my opinion, the situation warrants breaking our word. Mike, that's dirty, and that's a low thing to do. Two policemen were killed. I want Burge. But Mike, you brought me here so I could express myself, right? That's right. Okay. And you're not going to pay any attention to what I say, really. That's right? That's right. This is not a debate. Mike, in my opinion, you have about that much ethics. I want you to realize what that man went through after he testified. I want you to remember that that man spent a year and a half in a mental institution. I'm very aware of that information. I want to make it clear to you, Mike, that if we pressure that man again, the very same thing could easily happen to him again, in the very same way. Two policemen were killed. Mike, there must be another way of getting at Burge. Delito is somebody Burge might have good reason to contact. Delito is somebody who might tell us where to find Burge. I'm not leaving this thing uncovered. And so I get to do the covering? Yes, it's left up to you to do the covering. Thanks for my own
They're looking for your brother-in-law. He's in trouble. Did you see him? He's out of jail. He killed two policemen and three armored car guards this morning. We want you to help us find him. I want to make it very clear to you, Toledo, just what I'm talking about. If I had to wait on the chance of his contacting you, I wouldn't be talking to you. I'd set a tail on you and wait. But I want more than that. I want your active help. I want you to try and find out where he is and tell us. You told us last time. I got a headache. We've all got headaches worrying about Burge Delito. I'm asking you as a citizen and a human being to help us. I got, I got, I got, got a headache. I'd like to remind you of something. The reason you're walking the streets today as a free citizen is because of the needed information you gave us about him the last time. I don't want to think about him. Do you think he might try and come to kill you? <laughs> He'd never do that for me. What do you want, Toledo? You want money? Do you want to be a paid informant? Okay, we'll make a deal with you. Ten dollars, twenty dollars, a hundred dollars. Oh, I wish those holes I was digging was my grave. Any kind of a deal you want, as a free citizen or a paid informant, any kind of a deal. I told my kid I was an informant. My brother-in-law, my wife. Come on, Delito. Are you going to help us? Mike. Take him out of here. Why did you tear me open again? I wasn't feeling anything anymore. I want him tailed. All the time. You know, Mike, this reminds me of Dante's Divine Comedy. When he describes hell. In the ninth circle in the center of the earth is Judas Iscariot, the informer, trying to dig himself out. With a jackhammer?
thought Parker had you tailing Burgess' sister. Right over there where that guy's gawking up at the window. That's where she lives. That guy gawking up at the window? That's Delito. That's our tail. He's married to Burgess' sister. What's that package in his hand? A uh, stuffed toy. Bought it for his kid, I guess. Yeah. Here I go again. Good luck. Father, Father, I've got, I've got to see you. Here you go. Chicky, get in there. Come on, let's get a good one going there. Yeah, you see, I used to come here and see Father Myler. Now they say he's not here anymore. No, I'm uh, taking over for him now. Father, I... I need help. Uh, you just give me a minute to change my clothes. <laughs> I'm in torment, Father. If you'll just give me a minute, I'll, I'll change my clothes and hear your confession. I've, I've made my confession. Did it come from the soul? Were you truly penitent? Oh, don't tell me that, Father. No. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning your honesty or your faith. I'm just trying to find out what's bothering you. Confession may not serve its true purpose without contrition. I need peace of mind. 
got to pray for these things, my son. You've got to wrestle with your soul. Can't you tell me what it is? I informed on a man, father, to the police. They sent him to jail. Well, is that necessarily wrong? Don't you have a duty to help the police? I informed on my wife's brother. See, I went with him to commit a robbery, and when the police caught both of us, I, I informed on him. The police let me go. And I went to the hospital for a, a long time, my mind. And then I, I didn't see my wife, and, and, and my son, I, I shut the door on that. Why is it bothering me again, Father? And my wife said to me, she, she spit in my face. What do you want me to tell you? Why must I seek the forgiveness of this man? Isn't the forgiveness of God enough? Why do I have to go looking for my brother-in-law, kneel before him, and ask his pardon? I don't know what to tell you. Make your peace with God. I can't make it with man. You can't make it with myself. How do you make it with God? Make your peace with man, and then make it with yourself, and then, then come back to God. I don't know enough. I, I failed that man. I don't know enough. something for the kid. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to send it, but I didn't know the address. Hey, I know the house and how to get here, but I, I don't remember the number. I've been here lots of times, downstairs, outside. I saw you going out one morning about 10 o'clock. Uh, you were in a gray dress with yellow flowers. Looked nice. Nice, like a, a woman, you know, not somebody dressing to be whistled at. I'd have sent you some money, but I, I thought you thought my money was dirty and wouldn't take it. I've got it in the bank, in the boy's name. I put in every week, you know, everything, you know, change in my pockets, a dollar at the end of the week, 
everything. The banks got a letter giving it to the boy in case I die. It'd be all right, you know. Put a boy to have it after I'm dead. I wouldn't have recognized you if I'd passed you in the street. I wouldn't have recognized you. You heard about Johnny. It was on the radio. I've got to see him. Judas only betrayed once. I don't want to betray him. I want to ask him to forgive me. Then I could live again. That's all I want. Don't you have any idea where he could be? I'd get down on my knees. I, I, I... I need him to forgive me. He's hiding. That's all I know. Wherever a person might go to hide, that's where he is. But if you hear from him, tell him... Tell him I plead to see him. I will. Downstairs, playing. Delino? Delino? Yeah? Go upstairs. Your mother wants you upstairs.
Detective Garrity speaking. Yeah, yeah. All right, madam. Now, you say you saw this man, Delito. How do you know it was Delito? Well, I heard the news broadcast on the radio, and I was looking out the window. I had this little radio, and I was listening while I was looking out the window. And I looked down the street, and there was this man. And he certainly looked like the Mr. Delito everyone is looking for. Where was this? Will you hold on just a minute, sir? Lieutenant, there's a man on the phone with a description that sounds like Delito. About eight blocks from where Flint lost him. I can see you a minute. Lieutenant Parker speaking. Yes? Will you repeat that information again, please? Look, Mike, I made a mistake. I goofed. But let's get this straight. It was just a goof, and that's all. What time was that? Oh? Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, look, I want to talk to you. You think I pips let Delito get away from me? Mike, I got to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Mike! You gotta listen to me. All right. Come on in. Who is it? It's me, Mike Potter. Has something happened to Adam? He's all right. Uh, nothing happened. Something, nothing physical. He had a fight with me. Wow. What do you mean, wow? Just, it must have been some fight to make you not finish your sentences. Come on in. I phoned him at his home and he wasn't there. So I figured he'd be here. Would you like something cold to drink? Thanks. What happened between you two? Did you start throwing parking tickets at one another? Oh, I reamed him out. He was tailing the guy and he let him get away. Oh. Serious? Pretty serious. Not as bad as I laced him out. He got a pretty bad temper when he gets mad. You know that? Really? You didn't notice it? Not that I haven't got a temper myself. Uh, uh, no. You didn't notice it? <laughs> Well, I was riding him pretty hard. I guess I went overboard. So I thought I'd come and ask your good graces to patch the whole deal up. Adam's not talking to me. Oh. Sit tight. It's in the house that I can't go in. Mike? Once a detective, always... Well, I don't want to talk to him. Adam, come on now. He, he came over to apologize, you know. He feels about this big, really. He came to beg my good graces. Well, he tried to get you at home, but... I wasn't at home. Obviously not. Come on, Adam. You can't be that sore at him, are you? He accused me of deliberately losing a man. Well, did you? What do you mean, did I? Oh, like the lady in Hamlet, protesting too much, perhaps, huh? Come on, what happened? No, I don't know, baby. I guess I've been at war with myself about this whole thing from the very beginning. Maybe that's why I blew so high at Mike. I guess he was just rubbing more sand in my guilt than I could take. Well, why don't you go in and tell him that, huh? And now you know, the longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be to do anything about, right? Right. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Parker. I'd love for you to meet Detective Flint. Excuse me. Come in. Hi, Lib. You know, I got a little problem with Mike and Adam, and I'll... Oh. Well, well. 
Looks like we got a quarrel. Got a big traveler here without any baggage. Must be an elephant hunter, eh? Hey, you hunt elephants, mister? <laughs> Put him in the trophy room. See Burge. $250. Maybe we can do something, maybe not. No promises. I'll have to get the money. I'll give you a phone number. You call in an hour if you got the money. I'll tell you where to meet. You give me the money, I'll ask Burge, can he see you? I'll give you 500. Don't ask Burge. Hour and a half. You have the money. Well, how are you, Mr. Delito? Going to make another deposit, huh? Oh, you got to dip in, huh? Well, it's a first time for everything, right, Mr. Delito? Tens and twenties all right? Oh, uh, you see, Mr. Delito, this account is in your son's name. You have to sign it in trust for Paul Delito Jr. There's no problem. When you sign, that makes it just as if the boy took the money out for himself. That's just a formality with minus. You're the detective they sent to watch me, in case my brother tried to come. I think you maybe got me mixed up with somebody else. What do you want to talk to him for? 
I know who you are. And I want you to take me to the police station so that I can speak to your superiors. I can go without you, just as soon as not. But if you want to look like a fool, you just follow me into the police station the way you followed me into the supermarket this morning. Have you got a car? Right around the corner. This is Mrs. Delito and this is her son, Paul. My son and his son, but we'll come to that in a minute. Now, this is Lieutenant Parker, Detective Flint, and uh, Detective Arcaro. I'd like a chair. Oh, yes, of course. There you go, Sonny. You can sit right over here. He hates the police and fears them. I taught him that. He hates his father for being an informer. I taught him that. I saw this boy's father this morning, and I denied him his son, the way I've been doing. How old do you think that man is? Looks old. But he's young. He spoke to the boy in the street, and the boy didn't recognize him. He told the boy, your mother wants you upstairs. Who told you that, I asked him. I asked the boy. An old man, he said. What does he look like, I asked him. And he told me, that's your father, I said. My father's a bum, said the boy. So I slapped him. Although I knew where he got it from. He got it from me. Now, this is what I came here to say. This boy's father is looking for my brother. My brother is a murderer. So, I'm going to tell you where my brother is. God save my soul. Take your time, Mrs. Toledo. You'll uh, find him on that ship. Got a gun? Knife? Sell your gun for 200 bucks. 50 for the knife. I had to tell him you were coming. I didn't want him on my back because he thought I stooled on him. You don't mind I told you? He said, go ahead, take the money. I'll sell you the knife for ten bucks.
Pardon, Johnny. I come alone. Johnny. It was my wife and kid, Johnny. Your sister. How could I leave him alone? And then they come to me in my cell, the police, and they said, if you talk, we'll... we'll We'll let you out. You can go, free man. And I, I figured, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. It, my wife, his sister Johnny, will understand. The kid is flesh and blood of your flesh and blood. Johnny. Well, that's what I thought. I, I was wrong. What do you do? You make your mistakes and you live with them. Johnny, let me make my peace. Johnny, please forgive me. I've sinned against you, Johnny. Please, tell me, Paul, I forgive you. Please, please. Paul, I forgive you. Who's gonna forgive you, Johnny? All right, Budge. Throw your gun down. It's all over. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.
Screen Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.